Do you have hard, dense, impenetrable clay soil? Have you been told that you need to do something to bust up that clay soil? Has gypsum been a recommended product to help alleviate all that soil compaction you have? Well, today we're going to talk about specifically gypsum and why it is not the right answer for you. Gypsum is calcium sulfate. Sometimes you'll see it listed on the label as calcium sulfate. Sometimes you'll see it listed on the label as calcium sulfate dihydrate. Typically, you have increased solubility out of a product that contains calcium sulfate dihydrate. But in reality, does it mean it's going to do anything in your specific scenario? Let's take a look at the data. Common claims from manufacturers oftentimes cite improved water infiltration, improved soil structure, alleviates clay soil, alleviates compaction, improves soil fertility, improves soil structure, improves heavy clay, improves soil pH. However, when we actually take a look at the research that's been conducted, we don't really see any of that taking place unless very specific criteria are met. We're going to start by looking at a study from University of Nebraska at Lincoln. University of Nebraska at Lincoln says gypsum, number one, is not recommended for sand-based soils. Gypsum should only be applied to fine textured sodic soils. A saline soil should be leached with heavy irrigation, not gypsum. Now we'll take a look at Iowa State. Gypsum has no effect on soil pH within the range of 4.5 to 8.4. Gypsum does not result in a net change in soil water charge. In order to decrease sodium saturation, 27 tons per acre tilled at 36 inches provided the only statistically significant reduction in soil sodicity. Gypsum provided no influence in, on yield in spring wheat, soybean, or corn. According to the University of California at Riverside and their refereed version of a study in GCM Online Magazine, gypsum alone had no effect on alleviating salinity in sandy soil. So the question becomes, when, if at all, should I even use gypsum? To understand the use of gypsum, it's important that we first define what is sodic soil and what is saline soil. Sodic soil is a soil that has greater than 15% exchangeable sodium. And if you're curious what is exchangeable sodium, sometimes you will see it on a soil test if recommended over on the corner where it also provides the base cation saturation ratios of cal to mag or K to cal or cal to K and, and that whole portion. Uh, also, you can do the math yourself and figure out what those ratios are based on what your reported soil sodium levels actually are. According to the data, gypsum is only effective in fine textured clay, sodic soils, high in exchangeable sodium. If you do not fit this criteria, then gypsum is likely not going to do anything for improving your soil structure. Now, do not confuse sodic soils with saline soils. A saline soil is a soil that has a high exchangeable rate of salt. And salts can come in many forms. Uh, we look at all fertilizer salts here. Nitrogen as a fertilizer salt, as a nitrate or ammonium or urea. Uh, phosphorus as a, uh, as a salt. Uh, ammonium phosphate, uh, phosphate uh, diammonium phosphate, monoammonium phosphate are all exchangeable salts in solution. Potassium is an exchangeable salt. Sulfur is an exchangeable salt. Calcium, magnesium are all exchangeable salts. So a high saline so uh, soil just means you have excess all of the salts combined, not specifically sodium. Remember, it becomes a sodic soil if you have greater than 15% exchangeable sodium. The only way to quantify whether or not you have a sodic soil is to perform a soil test with an actual sodium measurement. It is not something that can be guessed, and it is not something that just because you had road salt spill over onto your lawn that gypsum will actually fix. 
Remember, sometimes that could be that could exist as another salt. It could be calcium chloride. It could be potassium chloride used as ice melt. It doesn't necessarily mean it's sodium chloride. One of the things that's often overlooked is that gypsum calcium sulfate is a salt. So when we're talking about remediating saline soils, adding salt to an already salty soil does not make sense. There's nothing that's going to happen beneficially there to improve your soil quality. If you have excess salts, adding more excess salts is a bit insane. Now, when we're talking about fine textured sodic soils, excess exchangeable sodium in the soil will deflocculate the soil. You'll lose your soil stability and the aggregation of your soil. So adding gypsum in that specific scenario will reflocculate the soil and thus give you better soil texture. The second applicable use of gypsum is to supply calcium and sulfur. And I'll give you a very off the wall, but possible scenario in which it may exist. If we're talking about soils that have excess magnesium and high pH, that excess magnesium may be in the form of calcium carbonate and adding something like calcium sulfate will allow you to raise soil calcium levels without influencing soil pH. The only other way to do that would be by applying lime, right? And we all know that lime will raise soil pH, but if you already have a high pH, it doesn't make sense to add lime. Therefore, you can use something like calcium sulfate to raise soil calcium levels in that scenario. But I'll tell you this is that that is a very, very, very rare scenario to come across. The other instance would be if you have just generally deficient calcium and sulfur levels. You can apply calcium sulfate as a supplement to raise those. However, oftentimes if you're deficient in calcium, you're also low pH. And so it would make more sense in that scenario to apply lime because you'll also be increasing soil pH as well as raising your soil calcium levels. It does not make sense to use gypsum in that scenario. And then also kind of the last point is that if you have coarse soil texture or low CECs, then typically gypsum is not going to provide any benefit at all to you. So I hope you've taken something away from this video today and we've at least been able to save you some money. If you'd enjoy, if you enjoyed this video and you enjoy the content we put out, feel free to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. If you have any questions, we'll do our best to get an answer to you. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. Take it easy.